Woody Womack and Adam Gorney here for another round of picks. We are going into the weekend. Gorney, I went uh, five and zero oh in Thursday night's games. We're recording this before Friday night's games, so you went four and one on Thursday. How about that? We're rolling now. Yeah, after one and four, back to the meet. You know, reversion to the mean. We're back. We're back at it here. All right, let's jump right into the games. Biggest game of the week: number eleven, Oregon. The home team, actually, in this matchup in Atlanta <laughs> against number three, Georgia, playing at the Mercedes-Benz Dome, where I was denied a credential by the staff there. Uh, Georgia, 17-point favorite. Who you like, Gorney? You know what? The public and the money is on Oregon here, and I think that they they see that number at 17, and they think that's too much. My my thinking is when the feeling the feeling is when the number is too high, it's probably not high enough. Georgia's coming off that national championship, maybe a little bit of a hangover. I don't see it. I see a 34-10, 34-17 kind of game. I'll take the Bulldogs. Yeah, I'm going to take Oregon. It's a big number. It's kind of been there since it opened in the middle of the summer. I'm surprised it really hasn't moved up or down either way. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go with the, the Dan Lanning factor, thinking sure. that maybe he knows Georgia's team. But it's a tough spot for Oregon. I could easily see this being 52 to 10 uh, in favor of Georgia. But I'm just going to lean, lean towards the Ducks here. The other big game and another big line, number five, Notre Dame at number two, Ohio State, a 17-point favorite. What do you think, Gordy? Yeah, this is one of those perfect situations for me. The public is a little bit on Notre Dame, but the money's on Ohio State. I think Ohio State might be the best team in the country. I think they're going to score a million points this season, and their defense is is very, very good. I could see this getting out of hand a little bit. Notre Dame's a very good team, and they'll have a very nice season. But starting in this game is going to be very, very difficult in Columbus. Tyler uh, Buckner, the quarterback, is going to have a tough day. Marcus Freeman, I wasn't thrilled with how he handled the o Oklahoma State bowl game. I think this is going to get away from them a little bit. Uh, could be close for a quarter or so, but then Ohio State starts pulling away. I'm taking the Buckeyes. Yeah, I'm going with the Buckeyes here, too. That's a big number, but this is another, once again, another tough spot, really, for for Marcus Freeman. Essentially a brand-new coach. He, you mentioned he coached the bowl game, but Ohio State's just so loaded on offense, and I think they're going to be in that discussion all year and should be you know, a virtual lock for the, for the playoff if everything goes well and they stay healthy. Uh, next up, this is a game I really like. Uh, number seven, Utah at Florida. Utah, a three-point favorite on the road going down to the Swamp. Yeah, um, I think Utah could win this game handily. Uh, I think Florida's getting a lot of credit because it's a home game and the Pac-12 team is coming to the SEC team. They don't have the horses. Utah is going to come in there with a bunch of big, tough Polynesian kids that want to kick, kick ass in the SEC, and I think they're going to do it. <laughs> Billy Napier will get that thing right, but it's not there yet. I think Utah comes in and, uh, you know, wins pretty comfortably here. Yeah, I'm going with Utah, too. I think a lot of people, you know, I, I hear, oh, they're not ready for the Florida heat. It's like, remember when Boise State went down and beat Florida State a couple of years ago? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I think people underestimate. It does get pretty hot in Utah in the summertime. It's the high desert. You know, I think people forget about that aspect. Now, of course, the humidity is different. But unless Anthony Richardson turns into, you know, Cam Newton, you know, circa right. 2010, I think Utah, Utah's a very good team, like you mentioned. And they got guys, a lot of upperclassmen. Their quarterback, uh, Cam Rising, is a guy that I think, you know, sort of a, to me, a, a sleeper uh, Heisman candidate. I think he could end up in New York if, if everything goes uh, how it's supposed to. All right, moving on. Cincinnati, number 23 at Arkansas, six and a half point underdog on the road. Yeah, this is kind of a curious line because Cincinnati was a team that made the playoff last year. Obviously, there's a lot of changes there. And I continue to take the chalk here, which probably will mean I'm going to lose some of these games. But I think Arkansas is going to be very good. This is a rebuilding Cincinnati team. I think it's going to be a close game throughout. But into that fourth quarter, I think Arkansas is going to start pulling away. I can see sort of a 31-21 kind of game. I'm taking Sam Pittman. I think the Hogs are going to cover. Yeah, I like Arkansas here as well. I think, you know, like you mentioned, Cincinnati, uh, I think they had the most draft picks or tied for the most draft picks of any other school last year. It's a lot of talent to replace, especially at the uh, 
power six level as they'll tell you in the the aac <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna go with uh arkansas next up colorado state at michigan michigan a 30 and a half point home favorite yeah this is this is one of those numbers where you know michigan probably wins the game comfortably um but 30 and a half is a lot of points for anybody especially if they're going to be kind of having Cade McNamara in the game, then J.J. McCarthy. I don't know how they're going to handle that. I know they're talking about starting McCarthy in the second game and those kinds of things. This is kind of – it feels like one of those games where Michigan will win comfortably, but Harbaugh's not going to show all of his cards. It's going to be 31-3 or something like that. I'm going to take Colorado State here with the points. Not that I don't think Michigan could be a very good football team, but 30 and a half is a lot, a lot of points. If, if Colorado State can even get to 10, I don't see Michigan covering. Yeah, you know, Colorado State's got guys being dudes <laughs> with Steve Atasio. But that's the one thing that makes me nervous. I'm going to take Michigan. It does make me nervous that that Colorado State could just run the ball, like you said, and, and lose, you know, 35 to, to 10 or something like yeah. that and, and cover. So uh, that's a tough one, but I'm going to take Michigan. Uh, NC State going to East Carolina or East Carolina 11 and a half point home underdog. This is a tricky one, Gorney. Yeah, if if I was betting this game, of course I'm not because I would never do such a thing, but uh, I would take the over. I think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. I think NC State's offense is going to go up and down, but East Carolina can move it as well which tends makes me think that they can cover 11 and a half, but I think NC state could actually be very good in the ACC. I think they're going to go into this game and just kind of outscore them. It's going to probably be 49, 21. I'm going to take NC state here. I know that the public is on NC state. It looks a little low on, on the, on the line, which makes me think that East Carolina is going to cover that number. But if I was betting this game, I would take the over, but I'm going to take NC state with minus 11 and a half. Yeah, I'm going to take East Carolina. I think uh, these games where the big in-state school goes and plays the group of five school is always tricky. That's why none of the Florida schools will play my alma mater, UCF. That's why they hide from them, because I know that they don't want to go on the road to play that. So, uh, yeah, that's I don't like that one. You go over, over there to uh, Greenville. And I imagine ECU is going to be partying. It's going to be a raucous atmosphere. So I like Devin Leary, but I'm going to take ECU to cover. I think NC State wins. Uh, UTEP at Oklahoma. Brett Venables era getting started. Oklahoma, 30-point favorite. I'm going to take Oklahoma here. I think the defense is going to be in shape with Brett Venables running it. I think Levy with Dylan Gabriel is going to be perfect. If it was UTSA at 30, maybe I'll take UTSA. But I think uh, Oklahoma is going to win this game handily, and I think they're going to put up points. Uh, I'll take Oklahoma at, at minus 30. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going with you there. I might I might like UTEP in the first half, depending on how high that number is. I could see it starting slow, but Gabriel will be lighting it up. they got some talent at wide receiver. He's a very talented quarterback, and they're going to be airing it out. So uh, give me the Sooners. Number 24, Houston at UTSA. Another one of these tricky matchups I mentioned. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, this is one where I'm going to take UTSA. And, and mainly only because 80% of the public is on Houston. And so if 80%, you know, the, the line hasn't moved a whole lot. And if Vegas sees 80% of the people still betting Houston at minus four, they're trying to lure the suckers in. So I'm taking UTSA plus four. They could lose the game. It'll be 31-30, but the 31-28, but uh, they're going to cover plus four, I think. Yeah, I like UTSA, and I might like them outright. Uh, Alamo Dome going to be packed, uh, and it's going to be a raucous environment. So, I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I UTSA was very good last year. They've been very good uh, in the trailer era. So, um, I think this is going to be a fun game to watch. I'll be checking yeah. it out. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Roadrunners at home. Uh, next up, Troy going to Ole Miss. Ole Miss, a 21-and-a-half-point favorite. Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of how everybody should start uh, their seasons with a warm-up like, uh, like Troy. The weird thing is that all the money is flowing in on Troy here, and I don't know why. It's kind of curious. So if I was betting it, I'd probably stay off. Um, I could see Lane messing some things up and Troy keeping it close. Who knows? 35-21, uh, something like that. I'm going to take... For no other reason than the money's flowing in heavily on Troy, I'm taking the Trojans. 
All right. I, mean, I, I hate that we're agreeing this much. I'm going to take Troy as well. They actually have some talent on that roster, a lot of transfers coming in there. Uh, and so I'm going to take Troy, probably like a backdoor cover. I don't think it's going to be yeah. a close game. I think they could sneak in. That half point makes it a little scary for me. Uh, BYU going to USF, another one of these heat games. Oh, they're not used to the heat, Gorney. So what do you think? <laughs> yeah, they're not used to the heat uh, on the island. It's definitely not hot ever, so they, they definitely don't have any heat. So that's a really bad argument. Now, I can understand if USF's going to Connecticut in December and playing and they give up, and but this, that's a terrible argument. I still do think, though, that USF could cover this. Again, it's a game that, and I will continue to preach this, if the public is on one side, they're heavily on BYU, the money's on the other side, USF. I'm going to take USF plus 11 and a half, although BYU will win the game. Yeah, this is a this is a tricky one. I think USF is going to be improved. I remember they played last year, and I thought BYU was just going to kill them. And I think it was like a one score game. Yeah. I'm still going to go with BYU. I think, like I said, I I do think USF is going to have a much better team. They got a really they, you got a new quarterback in there, a transfer in who who's very good. And I still believe in Jeff Scott, but I'm going to take BYU. I don't like you know BYU's like you said they got big bodies, tough to match up with. Uh, so I will take them. Uh, Rice at number 14, USC, USC, a 33 point favorite. Yeah. See, this is one of those games where 33 points would, should scare a lot of people off. It's again, a toss up game, but I see this as Lincoln Riley trying to make a statement in his opener. And I think he's going to run it up. Rice isn't going to make a lot of people scared. The the Coliseum will be packed. Probably about 50,000 people in a 100,000 stadium. <laughs> but uh, I, this could be a 55-10 kind of game. You know, probably in the first series or so, USC looks like typical USC. But then they start warming up and, and they look good. I'm going to take USC here, even though it's a huge number. I took Tennessee on that huge number, and that was the easiest money of all time. Uh, I think USC is going to be very similar here against Rice. I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to zig here. I'm going to take Rice. And I think because of uh, the old intellectual brutality offense they run, that old Stanford offense, what they run down at Rice, I think they're going to try to take some air out of the ball. So um, 33 seems high. Like I said, I think I like another back tour cover 42 to 10 type game. I think USC is going to win, but I just don't try. I've had success backing Rice before just because of their style on these big numbers. So I'm going to take Rice. Uh, Miami of Ohio at number 20, Kentucky, Kentucky, a 16 point favorite. Yeah, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Kentucky here. Uh, I think Mark Stoops is really fired up about what John Calipari said about Kentucky being a basketball school, which it 100% is. Uh, I mean, they still play football there, but you know, if all of the fans had a choice to go to Rupp arena or to the football field to see a football game, I guarantee you Rupp arena is packed. So I, I do feel, though, that I like that kind of fire, that kind of energy, and that kind of want to in Lexington. Miami, Ohio is not going to put up much of a fight. I think Kentucky is a good football team. Uh, I'll take Kentucky here, even though they're not going to score a million points this season. Yeah, they got a new offense. I'm surprised the line is this low, but uh, Will Levis being regarded as a potential first-round draft pick at quarterback, Barry on Brown, the freshman, Coming in there, expected to contribute heavily. So I'm going to take Kentucky, too. I think they win this one big. I might definitely the first half Kentucky. I will be uh, following that one closely. All right, next up, Utah State at Alabama. Speaking of first half, uh, the go-to lock every week, Alabama, 42-point favor. Utah State already played a game. They're 1-0. So what do you think, Gorney? Yeah, they're one and zero, but they didn't look so hot against UConn, and that and UConn is a really bad football team. Now they have to go on the road to Tuscaloosa again. This is a number that's that's so high that anything can happen. I mean, you can get to fifty six, and if they get to you know fourteen or so, it's it's a push. And but I will take it if the number feels too high. It probably isn't high enough. I'll take Alabama. I'm not going to bet Utah State. This game is probably twenty eight nothing in the first quarter. They cruise. Uh, you know, the last time Alabama was on a football field, they lost. I would not want to be Utah State stepping into this situation. Yeah, Alabama easy here. Alabama first half, Alabama total, Alabama uh, line. Sorry, Utah State uh, Aggies. 
uh, I'm going with the Tide. So that wraps up our Saturday picks. We'll have picks uh, on our YouTube channel uh, only for the Sunday and Monday games. Be sure to check those out and uh, check out our podcast feed. Uh, respect my decision with Adam Gorney. You can find that on any platforms and uh, commitment issues with myself. We'll have more picks every week as the season rolls along. Thanks, Gorney. See ya.